You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today, we have another special guest. We're going to be talking to a music artist. She goes by Naomi Sky, and she's an inspiring pop artist. And we're going to learn all about her story today. So first and foremost, welcome Naomi to the show. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and I'm doing good tonight. We had a little rain where I was, so just had a nice day inside being a little productive and creating some music. So it was a nice rainy day. And we're going to learn a little bit about not just your music, but also about your story and how you are doing great things in the music industry as an artist and your music is all about making that connection and also about faith and love so we're going to learn about that but before we talk about your music let's learn a little bit about you tell the audience just a little bit about your background so i have been in love with music since i was really little my parents joke around that they couldn't get me out of a department store when i was young because i wanted a toy you know kid piano Um, So right off the bat, music just, I had such a pull towards it. And growing up, it was one of the things where I always could express myself and I felt safe to explore my emotions when I was singing a song in choir when I was little or when I was, you know, studying voice lessons with a voice teacher. And as I got older, when I took piano lessons too, everything, it was just, it was so much fun. It really lit me up inside. And just as I got older, I knew that that's what I wanted to focus on in college. And about two years into college, I actually, I, I would hit like a lot of fear and confusion as to what was my purpose as an artist? Why was I doing what I was doing, the whole music thing? And why was I even creating? And it ended up leading me to switch my majors completely. So I was a music major and I switched to communication studies. And then Two years later, I'm all graduated now and doing a different major, completing a different major, studying something completely different. It taught me how there will always be challenges no matter what field I go into. And it made me realize just how much I love music. So it ended up leading me right back to choosing to pursue my artist dreams and to be in the music industry. And I think I needed that challenge of trying something different to really figure out what and why my heart was so into music. And when you discovered that was your path as far as what you wanted to do, how did you take your first step? Did you know anyone in the industry? Did you kind of learn on your own? How did all that come together for you? So I feel really grateful because I met two of my mentors in college um, at the music program that I was in. One of them was my voice teacher. Her name is Cassandra Claude. And the other was a professor of mine. Her name is Raina Murnack. And the two of them just happened to also be into spirituality. So we would have conversations about, you know, life and music. And I felt like talking to them. I always, I loved how I was able to intertwine music and spirituality because I felt like it gave me a deeper understanding of why I was doing music. So they're definitely two people that helped me stay connected in the music industry. Even when I was not a music major and not performing as much, the conversations I had with them helped me, you know, really keep music as a forefront thought. Um, And then one of my closest friends also from college, he is a producer. So he has produced most of my songs so far, all the ones that are the two that are out you produce. His name's Quentin Thalen. And um, I think, yeah, having those friendships with people who are in the music industry and also seeing them continue to figure out what they're doing and how they're creating their artistry. uh, I think that helped me feel inspired to get back into it all. So you met some people that you can work with, not just as mentors, but some, some friends, some peers of yours. You went to the University of Miami, but you also grew up from Philly. So what was music 
like to you when you was growing up in Philly? Did you have a certain sound that you like, or how did you actually discover the sound that you wanted to explore? I think going to college down in Miami, Florida actually had a really great influence on me because there's so much culture down there. There's a lot of Latin music, Latin food. It's just, it's such a cultured city. And I felt like I expanded myself as a person being exposed to people from all different places all over the world. So I think that my music taste expanded in college to more of a dance EDM interest, which I think is what fuels a lot of the production in my songs now. Um, In Philly, when I was growing up, I was always interested in pop music. My sister and I would request, you know, Disney radio when we were in the car. Um, And my dad and my mom both have great musical influences or great musical tastes, I should say. My dad loves a lot of rock. Um, My mom loves pop and my grandfather loved jazz. So I, I grew up listening to lots of different types of music. And then with piano, I listened to a little bit of classical. So I kind of grew up listening to everything, but I was always most intrigued by pop music. People like Hilary Duff when I was growing up and um, Hannah Montana, who turned you know more into Miley Cyrus. But I think the songwriting, the lyrics was what really intrigued me because it felt like they were not just uplifting, but also encouraging people to explore different elements or just release their emotions. I feel like the emotions that, you know, lyrics can emit, it's, there's, there's so many options. And I loved how people were writing their songs, especially as I got older into high school and people like Julia Michaels started to become popular. I felt like the songwriting and Alessia Cara too, those two songwriters, the way that they wrote really, it intrigued me and it made me want to do what they were doing. And you as an artist, you did release your first single last year in August. Title of that was Let's Dive In. Tell us a little bit about that project. What was your, your goal for that project and what you wanted people to take away from the meaning of the song. I had so much fun working on that project with my friend Quentin. He produced it and I remember writing it, I think over one of the breaks during college. I was a winter break and I was dating, I was in a new relationship. So I started dating a new guy and I felt like some of the previous relationships that I had had were kind of contributing to some of my habits. Like I wasn't able to fully open up and I felt like I wasn't able to let this new guy in as much as I wanted to. So it made, it got me thinking about love and how um, it can feel so scary to really give your heart to someone or to put your trust and faith in someone else. But I think it's worth it. That's why there's all these songs and movies about romance. I think that that's a feeling that we all crave to be loved and feel safe and to really let someone into our world. So let's dive in is all about kind of a little bit of making myself feel okay that, Hey, it's okay to open up and let, you know, someone else in and let love in really. And I hope that it's encouraged people also to do the same or just to enjoy the fun side of life. It's, it's a playful song and, as much as the lyrics have, you know, their own personal meaning to me, it's been cool to hear from friends and people who I don't know listening to the song telling me that it's been uplifting to them and puts them in a good mood. That's that's also one of my biggest goals for my music. Once again, talking to Naomi Sky right here on Iowa Focus Radio. Go to her website. It's NaomiSky.com. And also a year later, speed up to this year. Not too long ago, in August, you released another single, and that one's entitled With You. What is that song all about? Because you are coming back, you know, back to back to back with new projects, and you're going to have a album, I heard, sometime in the near future, maybe next year. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so I, the full project is all focused on a theme that's been really apparent in my life the past couple of years, which is vulnerability. 
in college, I had trouble opening up to some of my closest friends. And, you know, it would be like little things, maybe just like I was stressed about something and I, I didn't want to tell someone else why I was stressed because I didn't want to be a burden or, you know, little things like that that started to add up that led to me realizing that it, it can be hard to let people in, or at least it was for me at the time. And so with you dives into another aspect of love, the idea of intimacy or, or desires. And I feel like that plays out for everyone differently in a romantic relationship because we all have different beliefs and everyone has different boundaries. And that's cool. I wanted the song to just encourage people to embrace those desires and to accept them because I feel like desire is something that can lead us to follow our heart, whether it's desiring a specific person that we realize we have feelings for or a desire to chase our dreams. It can lead us to these great things. And I feel like in a romantic relationship or in an intimate relationship, especially as a woman, sometimes you can be, or I have been afraid to maybe be intimate in some situations. But I think just like with anything else, with being vulnerable, you're taking a risk, but it, it can turn out to be, you know, a great experience or a great thing. If, you know, the person that you're choosing to be with is also a great person. So the song I hope really helps people kind of think about passion and intimacy and their desires. And it doesn't have to be just about romance. It could be about anything in the world, but encouraging them to really pursue whatever lights them up inside. And once again, talking to Naomi Sky, you're going to be busy because like I said, moments ago, you plan on having a album out sometime in the near future, uh, near future. What are you most excited about? And if there are any teasers you can give the audience, what you think they can kind of expect to hear from you next? Yeah. So I have a third single that I'll actually be releasing next month. I haven't released or announced any specific date yet, but that'll be the next time that you'll hear new music from me in October, 2021. And then as far as future releases for the album, I'll definitely be releasing at least two more singles before I drop the full album because I really want to give people a taste of all the different elements or topics that I explore with my album about vulnerability. Um, I guess the next thing I can tell you to give you a little sneak peek into the next song, it's called Heart on My Sleeve. And I'm excited about this one because it's me starting to open up and I feel like a lot of introverted people can maybe relate to it as you know someone who can be inside their head or maybe observes other people and is really empathetic and very into the world going on around them like making sure that people around them are okay having a good time when they're out uh heart on my sleeve is really about starting to open up to the world around me and letting and choosing to let people in so, and it's also a little bit of that give and take of wanting someone to be patient because, you know, all good things take time. So I'm excited to share it. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram at officially Naomi Sky to stay up to date on more of my music. I'd love to have and meet or connect with anyone who's interested in music, spirituality. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a little sneak peek into the next song. And when it comes to you creating the songs, the behind the scenes stuff, the, the hard stuff to look at before it's all polished up and ready for the public to see, what's your favorite part of the process as you are creating new songs for your fans? One of the things I love the most is how I feel like being an artist allows me to expand as a person. I feel like I get this opportunity to really reflect and think about what am I doing or maybe what is not the best habit, especially because sometimes that comes up for me in a song that I'm writing and I might not have noticed it if I wasn't writing that song. So I feel like being able to reflect and get introspective and try and be a better human is one of my favorite things about making art. And then 
is something that might even top that is really just being able to connect with the people I'm working with. Like, I am so grateful for the friendship I have with my producer, Quentin, and the friendships I have with my two mentors who are older than me, but now they feel like family. I feel like that connection that music brings, it's, it's such a pure connection. And there's, there's just nothing like it because you're letting people see your soul. You're showing your soul, you're sharing it, you're sharing your heart with the world. And I think music is such a gift that we get to give it to others and share it with others, but it's also, it gives back to us in that way too. You mentioned earlier in the interview that your grandfather was into jazz music. Was there anything that he showed you or told you that kind of impacted your music career? Yeah, definitely. I was, I've always been really close to my family and my grandfather passed away when I was eight and he was such a laid back person, such a very relaxed person, but also a very smart person. He was a doctor and music was one of the ways that he would relax. And I think watching him enjoy listening to a really great jazz song or him talking to my dad about it, my dad kind of telling me stories about the conversations he had with my grandfather. I think those are some of the things that have really rubbed off on me when it comes to music because it's such a great tool to be able to sometimes get into a more relaxed space that we might not be able to access on our own every day with the stresses of life. So I try to incorporate elements in some of my songs as well that make people feel at peace either with what they're feeling or just let people relax and enjoy the music, whether it's dancing to something more upbeat or you know, kind of swaying to a, a ballad so that I guess, yeah, that relaxation element is something that he really taught me about through his love of jazz music. And going back to the University of Miami, you major in mass communications. Was that something that you always wanted to do or was that something you just did? How did how what was your intention on majoring in mass communications? With that, I always loved connecting with people. And I loved being able to both, yes, talk and share my stories. But one of the things that I've always loved is listening. And I've always thought it's interesting because I've noticed growing up and, you know, connecting with friends and teachers over the years, um, how much people love to talk if you give them the opportunity, because not enough people listen really. So that wasn't something, communication was something I was always, I think, interested in in the back of my mind, but it wasn't necessarily uh, something that I went to college like knowing that I wanted to do because I went to college majoring in music at first. So the switch to communication happened because I had a couple really cool classes. They were electives and one was the power of dialogue and another was all about conflict management. And between those two classes, I thought, whoa, th this, this is really cool. I mean, these are skills that we can utilize every day, no matter what we're doing, because communication, that's how we all relate. And I, I kind of nerded out about it, I guess, in college. And that's part of also what made me switch my major. But uh, I'm really grateful that I ended up majoring in mass communications because I think it's given me a better perspective on lots of things like conflict and how that can be a good thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, something's going horribly wrong. It can be an opportunity to dive deeper into different people's perspectives. Um, it made me look at the world differently in my communication classes. So I'm, I'm very grateful that I majored in it and I did end up minoring in music as well. So I did get a little bit of credit for those classes that I took at the beginning of college, but yeah, both of my um, my major and my minor from my college education really, I feel like, fulfilled me in ways that I might not have expected. And you mentioned one, was it a course, uh, conflict management? I find that very interesting. Was was that actual course of like a class where you just, that was the whole class, it was all about that? Yeah, so that class, that was one of my favorite classes that I took, and it was called Conflict Management, and it was all about how we used the teacher that taught us, she used specific movies and TV shows, maybe like a five-minute clip, 
and we would watch people in a conflict and we would dissect, you know, what were they arguing about? And based on whatever else we saw in the clip, was there an underlying issue that was really affecting the conflict? And did each person know what the underlying issue was? It's really interesting because conflict, I never realized how many layers there can be to a conflict until I took this class. And it's, it's, it really changed my mind because I used to, I, growing up, I thought conflict was a really bad thing because, you know, as a child, I don't think you ever like to hear anyone argue or anything like that. But I think now it's conflict is, is not a bad thing. It actually can show that you care when you stand up for what you believe in, whether it's disagreeing with a friend on something like politics or even a creative um, disagreement, like with music wanting the song to go one way versus another, the conflict can be a great opportunity to really delve into, well, why, why, what is the reasoning for wanting the song to go this way versus that way? And it can really tell people more about you if you're open to talking about it and diving into it. Sounds like there's many strategies that uh, y'all discovered through that class. That sounds really interesting. Now, you, I like how you tie that to music. I was going to ask you, do you use a lot of things that you learn with your mass communications inside your music day-to-day -day task? Yes. So I think without me even meaning to win what I just said, um, that kind of shows how my communication classes, I think, have really played into my creativity. The song Let's Dive In is all about diving into something new, right? Um so I think my communication classes, they definitely serve me. And, you know, if I run across a problem with someone I'm working with, I definitely handle it differently than I would have if I hadn't taken some of the classes I had. Um, there's, I feel like I have more tactics to try and understanding the other person's perspective as opposed to maybe just wanting it to be my way which I think is a great tool for anything, whether you're in music or any career. Um, and yeah, I feel like just the other ways that I use things that I learned from my communication classes would be listening and how I'm listening. I think the questions I also ask are more focused and they're more helpful to me to gain insight into, you know, if there's a disagreement with the way a song wants to go, well, why is the other person really interested in this? So I think that overall, it the questions that I ask and the ways that strategies that I've been taught in school really do help me in understanding other people and where they're coming from with music and, and everything in my life, my personal relationships, my family, my friends, everything. So I definitely recommend if anyone is confused out there and wants to do music and communicate and doesn't know, you know how to work that into a job, if, if you major in communication, it can definitely help you for sure in college. And once again, talking to Naomi Sky, you gotta check out her music, go to her website, it's NaomiSky.com. And before we wrap this up on Anime Focus Radio, I hear a lot of just critical thinking, a lot of skill sets, a lot of building blocks, a lot of strategies, if you will. And you as an artist, as a, just a creative mind, when you have your goals in front of you, before we let you go, what are some of your strategies that you personally use when you are trying to achieve your goals, whether they are short-term or long-term? I, I thank you for saying all that about the critical thinking. I really appreciate that feedback. Uh, I think almost ironically, when I'm writing a song, I try and throw out all of the critical thinking out the window. And a lot of my lyrics come from just like train of thought, kind of like subconscious stream of thought. So I really let myself just write whatever. And then I'll come back and use those critical thinking skills and maybe bounce the ideas off my producer or a friend and see if what I wrote makes sense. Because I think sometimes having that feedback from another person can be really helpful, especially when I'm writing it a song on my own. Um, so I feel like gaining some type of balance between the critical thinking and also that freedom, that free spiritedness of you know creating and 
writing music, I think having that balance is probably what helps me the most when I'm creating. And one more thing before I wrap this up, how did you come up with your artist name, Naomi Sky? I love that question. So my dad actually helped me come up with the name. We were trying to, you know, just spitball ideas out there. And I am half Jewish. So my Naomi is my Hebrew name. And he was kind of joking around because I told him I, I wanted, you know, something that sounds kind of um, almost ethereal or a little fantastical, like dreamy. And so he was like, well, how about Naomi Sky? And, and I don't even know how he came up with Sky. He just suggested that off the top of his head when we were randomly spitballing a bunch of different name ideas. And I was like, oh, I actually think I like that. And I looked up the meaning of Naomi and it means pleasantness. And the name Naomi Sky to me, it has this uplifting feel. I like the idea of the sky because I feel like it holds so much possibility and so much power. You know, there's lightning and thunder that comes from the sky and rain, sunshine, the stars are up there. There's so much that goes on. And I feel like it just shows us how wonderful the world is. And so putting together the two themes of the sky and all these possibilities and the meaning of Naomi, which is pleasantness. I just, I thought it has a beautiful ring to it. I love the meaning behind it. And so I, I decided to go with it. <laughs> Once again, been talking to Naomi Sky right here on I Am Focus Radio. Go check her out on her website. It's NaomiSky.com. And also you have uh, another Instagram just for updates. That's What's that uh, handle for your updates for when people want to learn about the album coming out and all that stuff? Yeah, thank you for mentioning it. It's at Naomi, at It's Vulnerable Naomi Sky. Perfect, perfect. Well, once again, being this to Naomi Focus Radio and talking to Naomi Sky, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful to be on here and I enjoyed connecting with you so much. So thank you everyone for listening too.